Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We're blessed to be um, with you all today. This is a blessed day. It's a day the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. We are blessed to have all of you that are joining us here uh, with us today, and we're excited. We have a great word from the Lord today, a word that will bless you, a word that will help you, a word that would encourage you, a word that will um, uh, exhort you to trust God in all uh, that you do. We once again are dealing with wisdom, and today's lesson will be dealing with the gift of wisdom, the gift of wisdom. Wisdom is a gift uh, from God. It is a valuable commodity. It is more precious than silver and gold. It's more precious than all of the material possessions that we share, that we um, can gather in in our life. And so as we study wisdom today, I invite you to join me in the book of Proverbs, the eighth chapter. Once again, for all of you that are joining me, we see you all that are joining me uh, online today. Brother Kendrick is so blessed. Uh, it's a blessing to have you with us today and know that you stand connected uh, with us with us through all uh, that is going on. Sister Tanya, uh, Latanya, we are blessed to have you here with us today. Sister uh, Tiffany, Sister Evelyn Smith, we send God blessing and prayers upon you and your family, Sister Laverne Scruggs. And to all of you that will be joining with us today, I'm excited about what God is doing uh, even in these difficult and challenging uh, and extraordinary times. We know that we serve a God that is still in control. And let me thank all of the CMBC family for all that you did for our graduates uh, for the year of 2020. It's a year unlike any other year that all of us, any of us have experienced in our life. So we celebrate Sister Zion Johnson. Uh, we celebrate uh, Sister Samari Keaton. We celebrate uh, Jadon Tate. And we celebrate Roderick Connor. And we just praise God for all of you that blessed them um, in this uh, in their graduating high school as they move into the next chapter, the next level in their life. And let's continue uh, to encourage them to go and do greater things in the name of the Lord. We've been dealing with wisdom, as we said, coming from the uh, book of Proverbs, the eighth chapter, uh, verses eight through 14. And then we skip to verse 17 through verse 21. Last week, we dealt with the value of wisdom. We dealt with wisdom's worth and wisdom importance. Uh, we need wisdom for godly living, godly living. We need wisdom uh, to judge righteously. We need uh, wisdom uh, uh, to direct us and, and guide our path. And so we thank God today that God have given us wisdom. And in order to get wisdom, we got to desire it. We got to pursue it. And then when we get wisdom, we need to hide it. We need to hold it close to our heart. Uh, we just don't let it uh, just slip away. We retain that knowledge. We retain those instructions and we uh, uh, retain that information because it will be a blessing unto us. Amen. So we just thank all of you for joining us here today. Amen. So open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, the eighth chapter. And before we begin our lesson, let us just begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God and our Father, Lord, how we bless you and thank you, Lord, for this day. It is a day that you made. Lord, we rejoice. We are glad in it. We're excited, Lord, about what you're doing right now in the midst of um, all the injustice and things that are going on. God, we know there's a purging. Uh, there is a um, a, a change. There is a movement going on right now that's causing black and white and uh, brown to come together and recognize that, God, that uh, justice is for all. And so, God, we thank you for this movement. We thank you for this time. Use us, God, in these times. Realize that we, we're in an Esther, Esther moment in time, in history. For such a time as this, God, you have raised us up Lord, to be a witness, to challenge the uh, injustice and the social um, climate that is going on right now. Use us today to your glory and to your praise. Now, Lord, we lift up all the sick and afflicted among us. We pray uh, for my brother and sister, uh, Reverend Tennyson and Sister Tennyson. Lord, we pray for them in the, in the loss of their brother. We pray, Lord, that you bless them today. We lift up our sister, Sister Washika Williams, that you will bless her, God, and and Lord, we know that uh, she dealt with sickness in her family with her son. 
We pray that you cover them in the name of the Lord. Continue to bless uh, the Dorsey family. And Lord, that you would um, send your compassion and send your love and care to them, even in Arkansas. Now, Lord, uh, bless us as we study your word today, the book of Proverbs, that we, uh, as we study, Lord, in all of our getting, we may get an understanding, Lord, to take these principles and make them practical in our everyday living. We love you, God. We thank you once again for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, if you receive that prayer today, amen, just tell God thank you. Amen. Now, Sister Nicole, we're glad to have you with us here uh, as well uh, today. Amen. Once again, we're in the book of Proverbs, the eighth chapter, verses eight through 14. Then we'll skip to verse uh, 17 through verse 21. There are two major themes I'll be dealing with today. First of all, we're dealing with, we'll be dealing with the pursuit of wisdom, how wisdom must be pursued, coming from uh, that eighth verse through verse 14. And then we'll deal with the promise of wisdom. The promise of wisdom that's in verse 17 through verse 21 i'm excited about this word because if there ever was a time that we need wisdom we're living in that time right now we need it uh in our political uh, realm we need it uh in our, our family realm. we need it in our personal relationship amen those in leadership position need to be operating and and uh, need to be executing uh, uh leadership uh, with wisdom and so in every facet of our life, we need wisdom. Uh, we need to discernment. We need knowledge in all that we do. Well, as we turn to this eighth verse in the book of Proverbs, in that eighth chapter, amen, uh, let us read. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 14. Open your Bibles up. And for the CMBC family, uh, we do have our new books in. We'll be coming into a, another quarter. And so we do have our new books in. Uh, you can come to the church on Sunday morning and we'll have them in the vestibule for those that will be coming in, grabbing a book and leaving. Amen. So you can get your new Sunday book. Make sure you get your Sunday school book and you can follow us in our Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Proverbs 8th chapter beginning at verse 8 you read how you read words similar to these all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing forward or crooked or perverse in them they are all plain to him that understand it and right to them that find knowledge receive my instructions and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a powerful uh, word, powerful scriptures we just read um, right there. Now, when we get into this eighth chapter of the book of Proverbs, Proverbs, the eighth chapter, provide a background for Christian understanding. Proverbs, the eighth chapter, provides the background for Christian understanding of Christ as the wisdom of the word of God. This chapter is regarded as one of the most difficult and insightful chapters in the book. It encourages us to choose wisely. Wisdom is Christ, and in him all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge lay. The word of God, my brothers and sisters, is true wisdom. And without wisdom, the word of God would have no of no value and it'll be infected ineffective before god created the mountains the sky and the sea wisdom was present 
wisdom work hand in hand with God in the creation of the world. And so when we get into the eighth chapter of um, Proverbs, we need to go back to the uh, third chapter of Proverbs, verses 15 through 18. And when you get to the third chapter of Proverbs, wisdom is first personified. It simply means wisdom is pictured as a human or having human personality in Proverbs 3, verses 15 through 18. And so chapter 8 and 9 picks up on this personification and it pictures wisdom as a woman, a woman who speaks, a woman who witnesses her existence before all humanity and offer wealth and prosperity to all who find her. Wisdom is a gift. It is valuable. We should pursue it. And when you find it, you'll find righteousness or the right living. You'll find justice. You'll find the uh, ways and principles to live a godly life. Listen, if all of us can be real today, many of us made some mistakes yesterday that if we knew what we knew now, we would have made a different decision years ago. I mean, the old folks, you say, if I knew then what I know now, I would have did things a little bit differently because wisdom gives us the ability to discern, the ability to choose the soundest course of action, the ability to know truth from lie, a lie, to know righteousness, amen, from unrighteousness. And we all need, amen, uh, this valuable gift of wisdom. And so in verses, uh, chapter 8, verses um, 8 through 14, many of the Proverbs are addressed to uh, youth to warn them. He says, the father sitting down talking to his son or his young daughter. Amen. He gives them uh, uh, words and principles, amen, to warn them against the many pitfalls in life because life has some pitfalls. If you apply the practical message of God's wisdom, your life will be enriched. He also warned them that if you forsake them and follow your own wisdom and understanding, you will be on a path of destruction. So wisdom here is affirming that her teaching is honorable and trustworthy. Notice what it said in verse eight, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. Just simply means there's nothing that is all in shambles and snarled together. There's no crooked words uh, in, uh, in my mouth. And that was what wisdom is saying today. You can trust me because I am honorable and my words are trustworthy. Listen, her truth is hidden only to those who, who, who are willfully ignorant. The truth is only hidden to those who want to stay ignorant. The Bible tells us, I would not have you ignorant, my brethren. And the Bible also says in, in the book of Hosea, the fourth chapter, it says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Amen. With ignorance come destruction. And so it says uh, here in verse nine, they are all plain to him that understand it and write to them that find knowledge. Amen. So wisdom says, my words are plain for him that understand it and are right to them that find knowledge. Amen. So the plea, the pursuit of wisdom, the plea is to acquire wisdom and knowledge rather than silver and gold. Amen. So the plea is to acquire wisdom and knowledge rather than silver and gold. Verse 10 says, receive my instructions and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. Verse 11 says, for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Amen. You can't compare wisdom to uh, material possessions. Amen. You can't compare wisdom to silver or the choicest gold or even rubies or all the things that we desire 
you know, we're living in a materialistic world where everybody desires fancy clothes, fancy home, and uh, uh, fancy cars, and uh, all the precious jewels, amen, but yet they don't live their life in wisdom, and wisdom is more precious than all of these things, amen, I know somebody received that today, amen, so uh, 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 he says that the plea is to acquire wisdom and knowledge rather than silver and gold is a testament to wisdom's value. That's a testament to the value of wisdom. It's more precious, can't be compared to silver, gold, or any of the uh, precious jewels or uh, any fine thing, finer things in life that people, amen, really want to get a hold to them and think they're better because they got uh, precious things, amen, materialistic things. They think they're better than everybody else and um, they get lifted up in their pride because they live in a certain neighborhood. We get lifted up because we drive a certain kind of car. We look down on other people who don't have that, the same possessions that we have and we think that we are better off than they are. But a person is operating wisdom may not have the finest materialistic possessions in life, but they have some things that these material things cannot provide. They may have joy, they may have peace, they may have spiritual discernment, amen, and so their life is fulfilled, they are successful, even though they don't have these materialistic things. But I do believe that when you find wisdom, then God will provide these other things, amen. Matthew tells us in Matthew uh, 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, Solomon, when God asked him uh, 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 to ask him anything and he would give it to Solomon, Solomon did not ask for uh, uh, treasure. He did not ask for materialistic uh, uh, gold and silver. Solomon said, give me wisdom that I may go in and out among these people because this is a great people. And God heard Solomon's request and answered Solomon's request because God not only gave him wisdom, but God gave him riches. Amen. Because God said, because you didn't ask for uh, uh, treasures, because you didn't ask for uh, the, the head of your enemies, I'm going to give you not only wisdom, but I'm going to give you riches. See, when you have wisdom, amen, you can attain riches. You can be successful because God is the one that supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Paul said that in the book of Philippians 4 and 19. Paul says, amen, but God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I know I got somebody receiving it today. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rose Holly. Amen. My cousin Joe, Joseph McGinty there in Houston, Texas. We're blessed to have you all here with us today. I'm talking about wisdom and I'm talking about the gift of wisdom. And wisdom is a gift that is available that God have God is given to anyone who is simple, simple minded that wants wisdom. And he tells us in this eighth verse, we got to pursue wisdom, the pursuit of wisdom. And when you pursue wisdom, you'll find out that the words of wisdom are honorable and trustworthy. You can trust the word of God. We gain wisdom through the word of God. We understand that Jesus Christ is the personification of wisdom. We understand that wisdom also, amen, comes from, from some of our elders who have went before us, who've been down this road, who understand where we're going, what we're going, what we're going through. Amen. And we can attain wisdom from their life experience. Amen. And thank God for some old saints that's still on the battlefield. The Bible says that old men are for counsel and the young men are for war. Amen. The old men are for counsel and the young men are for war. Amen. The Bible tells, amen, the older women to teach the younger women. Amen. That's where you get wisdom from. Amen. So wisdom can be transmitted and passed on down. And we got to all admit that we are where we are right now because we weren't too stubborn. We weren't too uh, 
uh, big-headed to listen to the wisdom of parents and grandparents, listen to the wisdom from teachers, from uh, some of our spiritual leadership, amen, to give us, amen, wisdom and instruction and knowledge, amen, that help us, amen, on this journey that we're on. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he goes on to tells us, amen, in verse 12, our wisdom dwell in prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Amen. Got to understand a principle here is that wisdom is, is a, of a greater value than any material wealth and is actually the way to acquire true wealthy wealth, spirit, spirituality, and naturally. Furthermore, amen, it says in verse 12, when we pursue wisdom, we receive the benefit of discernment and good judgment. Our wisdom dwell in prudence and find out knowledge of witty invention. Amen. So when we pursue wisdom, we receive the benefit of discernment and good judgment. We are able to detect helpful or harmful motive and navigate complex situations to honor God. Listen, amen. I like that. Our wisdom dwell with prudence, amen. When you get wisdom, you get a discernment, amen. And when you get discernment, you have the ability now to choose to know right from wrong and good from evil, amen. And when, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in our own self and we don't want to listen to the wisdom that God provides for us through uh, our elders and through some of our seasoned saints and from some of our teachers and our parents, grandparents. Amen. Wisdom is available. It is a gift. Hallelujah. Verse 13 tells us the fear of the Lord is to hate wisdom or hate evil, excuse me. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Amen. Notice what it says in verse 13. It calls us back to the first chapter of Proverbs. Amen. If you turn back to the first chapter of Proverbs, amen, open your Bibles, amen, and turn with me to the, uh, Proverbs 1. And it says, amen, in verse 2, Proverbs 1 and 2, amen, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, righteousness, and justice, and equity. Then go down to verse 7. Here it is right here, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 7 again, this is the foundation of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and in instructions. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we told you uh, a while back that a fool in the scripture, in the Bible, does not denote a mentally deficient person, but rather one who is arrogant and self-sufficient. He's a person who order his life, uh, his own life, amen, as if there is no God. Amen. And that's a fool right there. A fool tell you there is no God. Amen. Amen. You listen to a fool. Amen. And so that's the foundation of wisdom. So verse 13 calls us back to the first chapter of Proverbs saying, those who fear the Lord hate evil. If you really fear the Lord, amen, you hate evil. The Bible says that about Job. He was the richest man. Thank you, Sylvia, Sylvia Mitchell, for joining us with, with us today. Amen. Uh, and Patricia Ward, amen. Thank you for joining us here with today. Amen. We love all you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Listen, amen. He tells us, amen, Job was the richest man in the east. The Bible said he feareth the Lord and he escheweth or uh, have nothing to do with evil. And verse 13 tells us that here today, the fear of the Lord is to do what? Is to hate evil. Hallelujah. Amen. If the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Saying those who fear the Lord hate evil. So to be wise in this chapter, one is to fear the Lord. Therefore, wise people hate evil. Amen. How many know that uh, bad c company corrupts good morals? And when you fear God, there's some stuff you just can't hang around. There's some people 
you can't hang around because you hate, you don't hate the person, but you hate the evil deeds that they do. You hate the evil conversation. You hate the gossip. Amen. And so, amen. If you fear God, reverence God, amen. If you respect God, amen, then there's some things and some situation and some surroundings that you just don't feel good uh, being around or being in. Amen. And it's simply because you got the wisdom of God working in you that causes you to hate those things. Amen. So the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Then he talks about these uh, evil things right here. He says in this chapter, amen. Uh, um, Therefore, wise people hate evil. He said evil is defined here as what? Pride right here. Amen. In verse 13, pride, arrogance, amen. Corruption. Lying, amen. He's talking about evil ways, that's corruption. And a forward mouth, amen. Forward mouth is just a lying, lying mouth, a crooked mouth, amen. So people that uh, say one thing and they, amen, and really mean another, amen. And so he says, amen, when you, you fear God, you hate these things, amen. Proverbs 16, 18 said, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall, amen. Pride go up before destruction, and God said, "If you, if you uh, fear me, then you will hate, Amen. You will hate evil. You will hate pride. You will hate arrogance. People are all caught up in themselves, Amen. You will hate uh, corruption. You will hate evil ways, Amen. You hate a forward, forward mouth. You hate a lying mouth, and God hates the same thing too. And He said, "If you fear me." You hate the same things I hate because when you are walking in wisdom, you begin to take upon my attributes. Amen. You begin to take upon my traits and my characteristics. There are some things innately within me, amen, that points to me being my mother's son. Amen. There are some things innately within me that I cannot deny, deny points to me to being my father's son. Amen. They're in me genetically. Amen. They're in me through uh, uh, biology. Amen. But then there's a spiritual thing. When we get wisdom in us, amen, it begins to work in us on the inside and it becomes a spiritual thing that innately within us, amen, when we operate it in, in wisdom, we begin to take on, amen, the attributes of our Heavenly Father. Amen. Just as He hate evil, we hate evil. Just as He hate pride, we can't walk around here in pride. We can't walk around here being arrogant and all thinking we better than everybody else because of what I drive and where I live and what the kind of job I have. Amen. We can't walk around in that. Amen. We hate corruption. We hate evil ways. Amen. And that's why when you take up on the attributes of God, you hate the evil ways. And then you hate uh, uh, a forward mouth, lying lips. Amen. Amen. It just don't sit well with you. Amen. And then because you hate it, you don't entertain it. Amen. And so some of the things we we hang around and don't feel anything wrong with it, amen. We need to check ourselves and see if we're walk, not walking in wisdom and if we really are a child of the Lord, amen. So evil is defined here as having pride and having arrogance and having uh, being corrupt and a forward mouth, a lion. So wise people will resist, not only will they resist these things, but they will also challenge those Amen. Who show these characteristics, characteristics. Uh, amen. Wisdom will empower us instead to show evidence of common sense, insight, and strength that bring true lasting success. Amen. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am what? Understanding, verse 14. I have strength. Amen. So wisdom gives us the ability to stand up and the power to challenge it and empowers us. Amen. To show evidence of common sense. Amen. Uh, amen. Sometimes you, uh, you don't think you have the wisdom to do certain things, but then, amen, because you're following the Lord and you got the word of God and you now you got the power of God on the inside of you working inside of you that empowers you and that give you, amen, uh, uh, common sense. It's on display. Amen. The evidence is there. Now you have insight and now you have strength that brings true lasting success. Amen. Wisdom, we said, we got is, is the pursuit of wisdom. Amen. Uh, all the words he says in verse eight out of my mouth, they are righteous. 
there's nothing forward or perverse or lying or crooked or perverse in my word. And then it says they are, they are all plain to him that understand it. Amen. They're plain. God doesn't um, make his word hard to understand. His yea is yea and his nay is nay. Amen. He have commandments. He don't have suggestions. Amen. God said it. Amen. And sometimes we try to, um, you know, we get all mixed up because we're trying to analyze and dissect. We Instead of exegeting, we eisegeting the text. Amen. We don't got to put nothing into it. We just got to tell it just like it is. Wisdom speaks for herself. Wisdom, God speaks it. God gives us his word and it's up to us to accept his word, pursue his word. And then he said we should pursue it because it cannot be compared to silver, gold or any rubies. It is incomparable to all the materialistic possessions that we can attain and gain in this world. The Bible tells us, I believe it's in uh, um, Matthew 6 and 19, lay not up thyself treasures on earth where moth and dust, amen, moth and uh, rust do corrupt. But, and thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and dust does not corrupt, where nobody can break in and steal. Because it tells us where a man treasure is, there you'll find his heart also. Amen. So it tells us, amen, don't try to accumulate, don't try to be a warehouse of all these materialistic things, but we should be laying up some treasures in heaven. Amen. Where nobody can take it away, where it, where it will not be a corroded or corrupted uh, through this world. Amen. The second thing I'm going to deal with today is the promise of wisdom, the promise of wisdom. Let's skip down. We did verses 8 through 14. So let us skip down to verse, amen, to verse 17 through verse 21. Thank you all for joining us. Amen. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Amen. Uh, Brother Tommy Moore, thank you for joining us here today. Praise the Lord. Amen. And all of you that are joining us here with us today, we're talking about the gift of wisdom, the gift of wisdom. That's not a unifying topic. A unifying topic is wisdom's reward. But I, I'm using uh, I'm, I'm using a unified topic, rather, the gift of wisdom. Amen. The universal topic, international topic is wisdom reward. But I'm using the gift of wisdom because wisdom is a gift that is available that God freely gives. James 1 and 5 tells us, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask God who give it to all men liberally and abrade it not and it shall be given unto him. Amen. If you ask for it, God will give it. If you seek it, you'll find it. If you pursue it, God will give it to you if you desire it. Last week, lesson said you need to cry out for wisdom. Amen. If you cry out for it, it means you desire it and you will not be uh, 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 pacified until you get that nourishment that you are seeking. And God said, if you lack it, James 1 and 5, I'll give it to you. Amen. If you ask for it. Amen. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask God who give it to all men liberally and abrade it not and it shall be given unto him. Amen. So the second thing I'm going to deal with here tonight, the pursuit of wisdom, verses 17 through 21. Amen. If you got it, say, I got it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Join in with me as we read this uh, tonight. Verse 17 says, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. When he says seek me early, it simply means that those that diligently seek me shall find me. Verses 18 says, riches and honor are with me. Hallelujah. So if you find, if you find wisdom, if you find understanding, you'll find riches and honor. Because he says they're what? They are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Simply means that enduring lasting riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver is better than sterling silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the promise of wisdom. The promise is if you love me, 
Amen. I'm only loved by them that love me. But the promise is, if you obtain riches, amen, amen, if you seek me early and diligently, amen, amen, riches and honor are with me. God will give you riches and honorable, and it's not only riches and honorable, but they are durable riches and righteousness. Amen. So verses 17 tells us that those who truly love and seek wisdom will surely find it. So if you seek it and you seek it early or diligently, amen, not haphazardly, but if you are determined to get a word from God, ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be open unto you. Matthew 7 and 7 tells us that. Amen. So the promise is that those who seek wisdom will truly find it. Those who love and seek wisdom will surely find it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We told you what James says in the New Testament. James told us, amen. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. Amen. God will give it all men liberally and upbraided. Not it shall be given unto you. If you seek it, if you love it, you'll find it and God will give it unto you. So wisdom, it says here, is tied to prosperity and also justice. Amen. Amen. It says right here, amen, in verse 18, riches and honor are with me, yea, doable riches and righteousness. So it tells us right here that wisdom is tied to prosperity and also to righteousness or to justice. Hallelujah. Amen. And so this may seem contradictory uh, looking at the world around us, but it is made clear from the law, history, and the prophets in the Old Testament. The king who has great wealth also needs to rule justly, or he is seen as a bad king. So the one who has material prosperity is commanded to use it with care uh, for the poor and the vulnerable. That's in Deuteronomy 15, 7 through 8. So this reality of great power coming with great responsibility to care for the poor and defend, defend the vulnerable is one of the distinguishing characteristics of Israel against other nations that surrounded them. So Solomon, if we notice who wrote this, amen, Solomon himself, he in, embodied this very well, amen. He was the wealthiest man in the world, amen. He is also the wisest and he rules with justice, amen. He asked God for wisdom rather than uh, rather than wealth, which is why God blessed him with wealth and not only wealth, but he blessed him with power, amen, knowing he would use it righteously, amen. It is our responsibility as believers to follow Jesus Christ's example, amen. And so when we get to these verses here, verses 17 through uh, 21, amen, uh, he lets us know, amen, in verses uh, 17, uh, through 21. Amen. Wisdom followers are discerning. They are knowledgeable and they are clearly, uh, they clearly recognize truth. Knowledge comes through the experience of knowing the person of wisdom and that person of wisdom is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom is a loyal friend to those who love her. Amen. She will be found by those who seek her. So when we choose wisdom, we are choosing a companion. When you choose wisdom, you're choosing a companion. Hallelujah. One who walks with us uh, for life as we travel the road of righteousness. So as a faithful companion, wisdom is devoted. She is dependable in that you can always trust her to be by your side. Amen. Anyone who has wisdom as a friend will also find she is committed to and loyal at all times. She gives riches and honor, wealth and righteousness to those who choose her for a, for a friend. So riches refer to tangible earthly blessing. An honor person will gain respect. A person who chooses wisdom possesses wealth because she passes her wealth to those who love her and she continually fills their storehouses. So the truth of the matter is, 
uh, that when people choose worldly things over wisdom, that is all they receive. When they choose worldly thing of wisdom, that is all they receive. Amen. The worldly treasures, amen. Uh, that's all they receive. Amen. But when you choose wisdom over worldly goods, you receive worldly treasures along with wisdom. Because how many you know that wisdom knows just how exactly how to bless a person and how much they are able to handle without becoming too prideful? That's why sometimes God Amen. Some things we're asking for, God knows we can't, we, we don't have the wisdom to handle it. Amen. But when you choose God wisdom, God not only gives us wisdom, but then he gives us, amen, those other things. When we seek ye first the kingdom, as, as uh, Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33, when you seek ye first the kingdom, in other words, amen, wisdom ought to be priority in our life. Amen. And so when we find wisdom, Amen. When we pursue wisdom, the promise is that God would add all these other things unto us. Amen. I love them that love me. That's what wisdom says. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable. Durable mean everlasting. Amen. Riches, eternal riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. So wisdom is not trying to hide. The beginning of the chapter showed that wisdom is calling publicly for anyone who will listen. If you read in, in verses one on down, wisdom is standing everywhere in the. They're not in the. In, amen. On a hidden street. Amen. They're in the city. Amen. They're at the gates. Amen. They're in prominent location, trying to get all the listeners. To listen to wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he tells us that in the, at the beginning of the chapter. So for the second time in this one speech, Lady Wisdom says she is more valuable than silver and gold. Repeating herself so that even the simple will remember and understand. Not only is wisdom more valuable than silver and gold and ru rubies, but wisdom has those same things in her possession. When you get wisdom, amen, uh, uh, amen. When you get an understanding, amen. Wisdom have all the riches, amen, with her as well. She has material wealth and riches to benefit us economically, amen. So verse 20 and 21, as I get ready to close, amen. Thank you, amen, Sister Lee, amen. Sister Linda, amen, Sister Mary for joining us here today, amen. Praise the Lord. So Verse 20 says, in verse 20 and 21, I lead in the way of righteousness. Amen. You know, David said, um, he, lead, he, he lead me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. So I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment or justice that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Amen. That's the promise of wisdom. When you pursue it, when you love wisdom, amen. When you love wisdom, amen, he says that, amen, he'll lead you in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment. And he'll cause us, those who love wisdom, to do what? Inherit, inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures, amen. I just got to say, can't nobody bless us the way God can bless us. When the favor of the Lord is upon you, Amen. It's nothing that the enemy can do. It's nothing that man can do because what God gives us is doable. It is everlasting. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain the same. How many of y'all know that today? Amen. I said heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain the same. I know I got some witnesses out there today. Amen. And so, Instead of directly leading to gold and silver, wisdom lead those who love her down the ways and path of righteousness and justice or judgment. So the purpose in walking these paths is so that those who love wisdom will inherit substance and be filled with treasures. That's the whole purpose of walking in the path, amen. Not that you might get rich, but amen, but you keep walking in that path, amen. You'll receive riches, amen. 
Thank you. Amen. Sister Glenda Phillips. Amen. Amen. Good lesson. Praise the Lord. And so I don't know how y'all feel about it today. I want to live my life. Amen. Uh, uh, whereby I'm directed and guided with the spirit of wisdom. Amen. God lead us. He gives us wisdom through his word, gives us wisdom through uh, spiritual leadership, gives us wisdom through our mothers and fathers, wisdom through the seasoned saints that been down the road, experienced some things, amen, who have walked with God and tried God, amen. They'll tell you, amen, about through some experience how God had brought them through, amen. And that gives us encouragement that if we follow God, amen, if we love wisdom, amen, love, love wisdom that God gives us, amen, that God will turn around and bless us with these things. Notice what he says, I love them that love me. Hallelujah. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early or diligently shall find me. If you seek him diligently, you'll find him or find riches or find wisdom. Because riches and honor, he says, they are with me. I know sometimes we see, uh, we may see some wicked folks, amen, may be prospering and stuff like that. Those are all tangible, materialistic things, amen. And it may be coming from the God of this world, amen. But God is even control of that, amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes God can bless you even in the midst of your enemies. God can still turn around and bless you. Just simply means you don't have to do what everybody else is doing because what you want, you want doable riches and honor. You want durable righteousness, amen. Things we get on this side are going to stay on this side. But integrity, amen, honor, and respect, amen, and, and uh, uh, truthfulness, amen, amen. Uh, they, they, uh, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, amen, their works shall follow them. Not their riches, not their rubies, not their gold. You can put it on your neck, amen, and put you in the ground. But when you, amen, when you come back, amen, that uh, yeah, the rubies and the gold will be right there in the grave, amen, because you can't take it to where you're going because they're not doable, amen. And so when you get riches that come from God, those are the doable riches. And you can't compare that to these uh, the materialistic things, these elements we get on this side. Amen. They're going to stay on this side. But true honor and character and righteousness and uh, 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 amen, a righteous living. Amen. How many know that, that they're durable? And he says, wisdom say, I love them, then love me. Amen. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor, verse 18, are with me. Doable riches. Amen. Doable riches and righteousness. That's the difference between uh, the riches on this side that man can give, that we attain on this side. Amen. They're not doable. The doable riches are, are righteousness, or justice. Amen. Uh, godly living. That goes with us. It goes beyond this world. It goes beyond, amen, that's why you want to treat people right. That's why you want to uh, 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 talk to people right. That's why you want to love right, amen. That's why every believer ought to want to be right, amen. And when you follow God and love wisdom, amen, he'll give you the riches, amen, that are durable, amen, that go beyond this world, amen. Uh, my fruit is better than gold. He compared it again. It's better than gold. My fruit. Amen. It's better than gold. Than fine gold. Yea, rather than fine gold, verse 19, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, verse 20, and in the midst of the path of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and will fill their treasures. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, let's give it a close. Uh, inheritance, amen. I will cause those to love me to inherit. Or one can understand what he's saying right here, amen. We will inherit what? Substance. From that, from this much, we can tell if the substance is substantial, but the latter half of the verse clarified that wisdom will fill her followers' treasures. Amen. Talk about valuables. Amen. Amen. Place that God got some stuff stored up for us. Amen. That's exciting to know today. Amen. Sometimes we, it seems as though we've been passed over for stuff and things like that, but you keep walking in righteousness and truth. Amen. Still, amen. You ain't got to run with the crowd to think you can get ahead. Just know that God is the one that gives us the ability to prosper. Amen. God is the one that can truly bless us. Can't no man bless us the way God blesses us. And we're going to walk in wisdom. 
We're going to love wisdom. And if we love wisdom, wisdom will love us. Amen. And God will fill our treasures. Amen. With durable things. Things that will last. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let me get ready to close it now. Amen. Let me just say this. All in all, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. And with all thy getting, get in understanding. That's from Proverbs 4 and 7. Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. And with all your getting, get an understanding. Many of us are taught and encouraged to seek material things. We say the economy is dependent upon it. However, we do well to seek wisdom because our life depends upon it. Some mistakes we can't get back. There's some decisions that weren't based on wisdom that we had to pay for. Amen. Yeah, yeah God forgives us, but, you know, uh, we got, still got to pay for it. Amen. Thank you, Valerie McGinnis, for joining us here today. Amen. So all wisdom, in all, wisdom is the principal thing about life. He says, and with all our getting, get an understanding. Many of us, I said, we are taught uh, to pursue and we're encouraged to seek material things. Amen. But however, we do well to seek wisdom because our life depends upon it. Amen. Many people have education, they have knowledge, they have information, but they do not have an understanding. Whole people have a whole lot of knowledge, but don't, they don't know how to act upon that knowledge. They don't know how to live the right way. They have no common sense. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so instead of, of, of selfishly seeking wealth, we should seek wisdom. When we are humble enough to know that we need God's wisdom daily, God is faithful enough to give it to us. Hallelujah. So wisdom is demonstrated by the daily choices we make. Amen. Wisdom is demonstrated by the daily choices that we make. This is a great lesson today. I enjoyed it just reading it and studying it for myself. And uh, uh, it's talking about the gift of wisdom. Amen. When you get this gift, amen. Um, wisdom says that if you get it, amen, it will not lead you astray. Amen. It will give you the correct words. Amen. Uh, for all the words of wisdom in verse 8, or righteousness, or in righteousness, there is no, nothing crooked or perverse in, in, in this word. And so we, sh we need to pursue wisdom. And if you pursue wisdom, the promise is God will bless you, not only with wisdom, we will bless you with doable riches. Amen. Riches that man can't give, man can't take away. Amen. They can't take away what God gives because God gives. Amen. Uh, as I get ready to close today, Joseph's brother thought they can take away, amen, his coat of many colors, which they did, but they couldn't take away the favor that was up on his life because no matter where Joseph went, even down in Egypt, he was still prospered. Hallelujah. And that's doable riches. Amen. That's the favor of God upon us. When the favor of God is upon us, when you, we, we love wisdom, wisdom will love us back. Amen. I mean, it's so good loving somebody and somebody love you back. Amen. I'm going to leave it along right there. Amen. But a lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what wisdom said. If you love me, amen, I will love them that love me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It ain't no, it ain't no one way street. Amen. God said, if you love wisdom, wisdom will love you back. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us here today. Amen. This has been a powerful message, uh, teaching experience here today. Amen. I'm excited. Amen. Thank you. Uh, all of my relatives from uh, Navasota and Houston, Valerie, Joseph, thank you for joining us here today. Amen. Tiffany, thank you. Amen. Uh, my mother, sister, Lee. Amen. Linda Anderson, praise the Lord. Uh, join with us here today. And all of you that join with us today, thank God for all of you. I can't see all of your names right now, but I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Brother Joe, uh, thank you. Amen. And um, I just can't tell y'all, amen, how much it means to have a blessed family that's praying together through this, these difficult and extraordinary times to know that God is still, amen, on, amen, the scene doing great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Join us on this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. Amen. We'll be on Facebook Live. Join us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, also, amen, uh, our Juneteenth celebration will be going on. Amen. Amen. Uh, this Friday, amen. TCC is having a uh, virtual uh, Juneteenth celebration. Uh, I, your humble servant, be one of the uh, guest speakers, virtual. 
Amen. Um, you will find this a little bit later. We'll put it up on our page. Amen. Uh, yeah, that'll be it'll be uh, a continuous um, showing of it on, on the uh, TC, TCC uh, page. You'll be we'll be dealing. They'll be dealing with um, the history of Juneteenth and uh, what the celebration embraces and why it is important to celebrate. The guest speakers will be um, Commissioner Roy Brooks, uh, Mark Vesey. Uh, Ramon uh, Romero, uh, Stephen Lamans, Stephanie Hill, Robert G. McGinty, and Terry Aaron. Amen. So join us. Amen. We'll put this on our web page a little bit later, and you'll find the link that you can go to, and you can um, join the TCC celebration of uh, Juneteenth, a celebration of freedom. It'll be a virtual uh, webinar. Praise the Lord. We pray that you've been blessed tonight. Thank you all once again for joining with us here today. Amen. It'll be shown on Thursday and Friday. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Linda Anderson. We wanted to put it up on the um, uh, screen today. Amen. We had uh, trouble uh, getting it um, fitted on the screen today, but we'll have it on our Facebook on a uh, community page a little bit later. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Uh, practice uh, social distancing. And let's get these numbers down that we can all come back together in church. Amen. And worship and fellowship together. I love all y'all with the love of the Lord. Amen. Let me close with a word of prayer. God, our Father, Lord, how we thank you and bless you for the gift of wisdom. Thank you, Lord, that um, your word, your wisdom is not forward. Your wisdom, God, is for those who seek it early, diligently, those who desire it. Thank you, Lord, that your wisdom is much more precious and valuable than silver and gold and even rubies. It's incomparable. Thank you, Lord, that you love them that love you. And that because of that, God, you'll provide not only instructions on the path of righteousness, but you also uh, fill our treasures with these, the substance you lay up for us, God, an inheritance in heaven. And we thank you for that today. Continue to bless all those in our listening audience, God, some that are sick and uh, some that have loved ones that are sick. We lift them up right now that you may touch, heal, that you may do alone you're able to do. We decree and declare, God, your word and your blessing, your favor upon each and every one of our listeners. God, as we seek you and seek your wisdom and instruction, enlightenment, discernment, and what we're dealing with and what we're going through, God. Speak to us right now. Give us a word right now in the midst of this pandemic and COVID-19. COVID we know, God, that you have an answer and you are the cure. And so, God, we thank you right now. You are the Lord who healeth us. And not only you are the Lord that healeth us, God, but you are our praise all the day long. Thank you for your word today. Now, Lord, as we close, we say we love you, we thank you, and we bless you. And to meet again, we give your name the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining with us here today. I love you all with the love of the Lord. And we pray that you meet us again on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Amen. Live on Facebook. I love you all. Be blessed and go in the blessings of the Lord. God bless you.